Hi, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. I'm Lisa. And in today's video, we are going to go over the Fabric Godmother Dream Wardrobe for the month of August. And as always, I'll go over the delivery time as well as the cost since I do live here in the United States. And we'll also just unpack the box, look at the contents, um, give some takeaways of the quality, maybe some different ideas of what to do with the fabric and the patterns and go from there. And what I will do is I will link in the timestamp below when I actually start talking about the actual box because I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a recap of why I've been absent for the last few months just because my summer's been wild and I wasn't able to follow through with some of the content I plan on making. And I also thought I would share with you all um, why I decided to go back to the dream wardrobe as I did the So Haley Jane boxes for a few months. So um, this summer has been crazy. I won't give you guys a super long story as I'll give you more of a recap once I make my summer spring uh, sewing plans recap video and show you guys what I actually made, which was not even a fraction of what I intended. Um, it's been a wild summer. So as you guys know, I live in the mountains. So we have like three months of summer throughout the year and then it's like winter, at least that's what it feels like. And uh, we ended up getting hail almost all of June and mid through mid-July. So it was a lot of collateral damage, maintenance and control in my garden. Um, I traveled a couple times for work, had a family member who got really sick. Um, I don't know, just lots and lots of stuff going on. So. I am back and I do intend on creating regular content again and I've got a lot of ideas as I've had time to kind of uh, recalibrate and even just declutter my wardrobe and and really decide what do I want my wardrobe to look like in the future, what do I want to focus on making, what do I maybe like but maybe it doesn't make sense to me. So we'll see more content coming through um, the end of the year and also really what you guys probably are curious about is why I switched back to the dream wardrobe. So. You may or may not remember my first video I made on here this past February, or maybe it was actually March, but um, it was the unboxing of the February Dream Wardrobe box. And in all honesty, I was, I just, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the fabric. I didn't like the pattern. Um, I thought it was so minimalist, which I understand we, you know, we want to be more mindful of our waste, but um, for paying a hundred dollars, I just didn't feel like it was worth that for my personal style. So I decided to switch over to the So Haley Jane luxury box. And I did the So Haley Jane luxury box for the month of March through the month of May. Um, I was gifted one of the boxes since I was picked for make of the month, but I purchased three of the four. And then once June came around, I realized I have so many sewing plans. I have a lot of things I like to do in the summer, such as hiking, kayaking, just anything outdoors because it's there's snow on the ground nine months out of the year practically. And um, and so I decided just to put a pause on my June subscription because I realized I don't want anything else coming into my home. I've talked a lot about being more intentional and mindful of my spending and, and um, what I'm bringing into my home as well. So there's lots of reasons. And bear with me, I'm a little rusty on these videos, so I might be more rambly than normal. I tend to go on side tangents anyways, but um, just hang with me here as I'm trying to get back into my groove. Uh, but anyway, so I took that month off and um, then come July, I realized how much I really missed the box and how it's just inspiring, especially when you actually don't have a lot of time to sew. It's exciting to get something in the mail to remind you of a, of a hobby and a passion that you love and just seeing the fabric and and the patterns and kind of getting like your sojo going again. Um, and I didn't realize how much getting those monthly boxes really helped me to just boost my creativity, if you will. So I went to subscribe to her July box, the So Haley Jane July box, and uh, it was sold out. And then the same thing happened come August. And I thought, well, shoot, I really would love to have a box. So I decided to give the Dream Wardrobe another go as I really loved all of the Dream Wardrobe boxes last year and all the ones this year, I think I just got the one box I didn't like. So anyhow, that's long-winded. We've been here for four minutes now, um, but that's kind of the backstory of where I've been, just short and sweet, but I'll go into it more in another video, and also why I'm back on the Fabric Godmother Dream Wardrobe box. And I will say, I really, really loved this box, and I did already subscribe to next month's box. So anyhow, without further ado, let's just jump right into the boxes and how they work. So. I have my notes here. I have to write everything down. So with the Fabric Godmother Dream Wardrobe, um, they have two different boxes with size ranges. I should have written those down, um, but it really covers a broad range of sizes and they make sure that when you pick that box and that size that they will include enough fabric 
for you to be able to make that respective garment, which I think is a great feature that they have. Um, the way the Fabric Godmother Dream Wardrobe works is it's on an auto renewal. So once you sign up, it will auto renew. So you just have to make sure to go in and cancel. You might have an option to pause this the subscription too. I can't recall um, if you don't want to renew it. And it renews, I believe it's the seventh of every month is your cutoff to sign up for a box or cancel your renewal because on the eighth is when um, they actually take the funds out of your bank account to actually pay for the box. So something to keep in mind is the seventh of every month is your deadline. And then they actually ship out the boxes about two weeks after that payment is made. So around the 18th or 19th of the month. So for me, we'll go over cost first, since I'm going to do it in U.S. dollars. Um, so in U.S. dollars, the cost of my box was, do I have it written down? Okay, yes. It's uh, $94.88. And in pounds, it's $74.17. Now, in pounds, the actual box itself is $49.17. And then the shipping is 25 pounds. And so just to give context, I would assume the shipping is probably a lot cheaper if you are um, purchasing this box and you live in the UK. But for me, my total was 94.88. As for delivery time, I received my package on August 30th and I didn't have to sign for it. Sometimes when I get packages from the UK, I have to sign for them, sometimes I don't. I don't know if it's my post office that just makes up the rules or if it's how the sender sends them. Um, but it was nice to have this in my post box, my, my, uh, yeah, my mailbox. There we go. Um, cause I live in the country and when they come, they come at like three. And by the time I get my little sticker to go to the post office, they close at three 30. So I can't make it there in time. Um, not that you guys knew that side note, but I thought that I'd share it anyways. So anyhow, so that was the cost and that's how the subscription works. And so let's just jump right into it. So I'm not going to do this in any particular order. I should probably do like some kind of proper build up when I'm showing you the contents, but I just kind of grab things and start talking about them. So first we'll talk about the pattern. Um, so this is the Soho 7, is it Regalia blouse? blouse? Browse. <laughs> I can't talk. Regalia blouse. And while this is honestly not totally my style, I like boho, but I don't like too little house on the prairie. Um, I did for a while. And honestly, now that I'm getting older, I'm going to be 40 soon. Um, I feel like this makes me look older. So just for me, I don't like to go too Carol Ingalls on the regular. I, I still have a time and place for that stuff, but not, not, this wouldn't be something I would normally reach for. However, I will say it's a very classy fit, and I think this would actually make a really pretty blouse for work. I probably wouldn't wear this just in my day to day, but I think this would be nice in some sort of like a um, a plain linen fabric, something that's lightweight, or even like a Liberty London fabric. And I could definitely see myself wearing a blouse like this with some high-waisted trousers or a high-waisted skirt. So. I will not be using the fabric that came in the box for this. That definitely would not be my style, but I still really love this blouse and I do like the Soha 7 patterns. They're very um, easy to work with and they're lovely. So this is the pattern and then we'll go in. I'm just going to go right into the fabric. So this is the fabric here and I, I adore Indian block print print. I cannot talk today. <laughs> I adore Indian block print. Prints. There we go. This is done on a cotton poplin and the screen, probably the lighting's not the best. As you guys know, I live in a cabin. My lighting's always terrible. I need to just get a ring light and call it a day. Um, it's more of a kind of a baby pink, but a tad more vibrant than that. And I just love the Indian black prints because so much love and, and time and effort goes into these. And I think that they look so organic, if you will, as opposed to a screen print. So um, I own some pieces from... Oh my goodness, Daughters of India, as well as the Fox and the Mermaid. And I've just always loved the black prints. So I, I think this is really, really cool. Um, it's a beautiful texture of this cotton poplin. And for me, what I think I would like to do, I would like to make a lightweight strappy sundress and maybe even a dress that doesn't have a lot of shape and I just make a waistband to go around with it. So a dress that doesn't take a lot of work as this is gonna be a very light and airy fabric. And I think this would be great as we're going to Tulum in January, um, hopefully. Um, and this would be wonderful to be able to make a dress for that. So I'm really excited about this fabric. I just have an admiration for somebody who has the patience to stamp all of these on because these are all hand stamped. Um, 
So what I did is I actually me measured the fabric out of curiosity. So this fabric is 2.8 yards or 2.64 meters long. And then the width is 57 inches or 1.4 meters long. So to give you an idea, and I ordered the box that's the smaller size range. I think it's like double zero to, oh my goodness, 10 maybe. And is it like 11 to 20 or something? I'm so sorry. I can't remember. Um, but that's what you get in the smaller size range, if you will. So this is definitely enough to make a very lightweight strappy sundress, or I could make a cute skirt. Um, this actually, I think would really look really cute with the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel blouse. I don't think that there would be enough fabric for the dress due to the shirring. I'd have to check, but I think that the Tilly and the Buttons, um, Mabel will look really cute with this Indian black print. So I really, really love this and I'm really excited about it. So let's get right into, oh, here we go. Again, I'm doing this in a terrible order. This is a spool thread you get. It's always a Guterman. And in the light, this looks kind of like a light peachy pink, but it is a true kind of baby pink color. And that will go along with the garments. So you always get matching thread so that you can sew your garment and you don't have to go and pick up thread, which I think is wonderful. Now, as for the tool, because there's always a tool in the kit, this is kind of more of like a craft than a tool, kind of, sort of, and I think this is really cool, and I love this pouch. It looks like it's made out of um, some sort of like a linen or a cotton, um, and it's a great way to store this. So here's what we have. We get our own little stamp, and I love this flower. Um, we get some fabric paint. Honestly, I don't like hot pink. And this probably looks darker in this lighting here, but it's like a true kind of like electric 1980s hot pink. Um, I was born in the 80s and I just want to leave neon in the 80s. It's just me, but I, I think it'll still be fun to experiment with and it might look cool on um, maybe like a, like a marigold yellow fabric. I think the pink with like a, a, a yellow with a hint of orange would actually make a cool color and it would maybe tone down the pink a little bit and you get your sponge. And then there's instructions here to show you, oh, here, instructions here on this side. And this shows you how you can do your own block printing. I think this is so cool. I experimented this summer with hand dyeing fabric, and I've really liked the creativity of getting to use your hands and paint and um, natural elements to dye things. And it's so much more rewarding than um, using something like a, what is that website? Is it called Spoonflower where you can make your own fabric? I'm not creative enough to do digital design, but having something I can hold in my hand and create, I can, I can run with that. So this is super cool. So you have instructions here. And then there's all this information about what is Indian block printing. Um, I don't know if it goes into like the history of it, but the website is called the Indian Black Print co.com if you want to check it out and they have an Instagram as well and then you can pick up um more stamps and more ink and things I should have checked it out to see actually what's on here I was kind of hoping I would have gotten this B stamp I have a a B tattoo it's um it was I'm just sharing stuff you guys probably don't care about but it was supposed to be a lot smaller but I just joke that it's like a a bubble bee that got into GMOs or had too many steroids because <laughs> I wanted like a tiny little bee in my flowers not like this massive one. I will tell you though, this summer, we had this giant bumblebee that was almost this size. So I felt um, a little less uh, awkward about having a giant bee on my arm that didn't really make sense with the rest of my tattoo. Still like the bee, but anyhow, now that you guys asked for that side tangent. So I think we went over, oh, one last thing. So again, it's been a while since I've done a video, so I'm a little more scattered than normal, but I usually am scattered anyway. So in the package, you get your QR code. And um, don't mind my hands, I was working in the garden. And with the QR card, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. You can log on to, uh, well, it'll, it'll take you to a link to the website. And it is so cool because it's not just a link with instructions of how to um, assemble the garment, but there's also ideas of other items you can make with your fabric and tips when it comes to sewing with this pattern. And um, and then it also links you to a YouTube video where they show you how to, to describe I can't talk where they show you how to construct this blouse. So I just thought this was really cool. It was really well done. Um, and I, um, I can't recommend this enough. I was really, really happy with this purchase. And like I said, I am going to subscribe again to the September box. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, I think that's all I got. So, um, 
I'd love to hear in the comments below how your all summers have gone. Um, did it go according to plan with like your projects or has it been just as crazy as mine has? And I haven't, again, gotten into a ton of details, but I'll share more in my next video. So anyway, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. Uh, thank you for also your patience as I'm getting back into the groove of trying to video. And I hope to see you all very soon.